Hi, my name's Tom. And I'm Kelly. And we are the proud founders of Pink Zebra. Um, we're going to tell you our story today of how we met at a candle factory, mm -hmm. um, left that candle factory and went on to create our own candle company, mm -hmm. and then that ended up leading us to creating Pink Zebra. That's right. So we met in 1996 uh, in a candle factory. I was in sales and Kelly was in product development marketing. That's right. And we'd put product lines together, right? create product lines together for other big retail business. That we... Put their name on it. That's right. Put their brand on it, right? So when we first met, I have never met anybody um, so full of energy and creativity as Kelly, right? And I knew that I quickly began to trust that if Kelly was involved, that we were going to win. Thanks. And yeah, <laughs> and when we did that first year of being uh, working together, we sold 17 million dollars of new customer business to companies like Bath and Body Works, Pier One. Um, I mean, big successful programs. It was mm -hmm. a big success, and the team we had we had amazing energy. It was. It, I mean, the, the team would come together, strategize, and we were just full of possibilities. I mean, we knew that if we went to see this customer, um, it wasn't if they were buying; it was which part were they buying or buying the whole program. Yeah. We just totally believed in each other, and that, and we all had such confidence. Um, it was awesome. We were the endless possibilities was basically our, what was happening. It was awesome. It was awesome. And in 1999, um, the company that we worked for, that company that we met in, uh, mm -hmm. was sold, and the new owners came in, and we didn't really care for the new owners, and so we all quit. Our whole team, like one by one, everyone ended up quitting. That's right. And so we all had our separate jobs, our separate lives, and it was actually kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, I remember trying to interject the same kind of confidence and process in with a new salesperson and I just couldn't find it I couldn't grab it you know because Kelly went to another candle company and that's tried right. to recreate the same thing that's right and I actually was starting my uh, our own business uh, our own candle business out of our house while we we're trying to raise kids and Kelly would come home from work and uh, and I'd be like Babe, you have to help me here with this color, with this right. program. And I'm like, well, hang on, I gotta feed the kids. I gotta, we gotta get homework done and get ready for school tomorrow. Let's start later, and we look at it and start rearranging. And after a while, I literally just was a while, like two weeks of this. I just said, okay, Tom, obviously we've got something here. Let's just make this happen. I'm gonna leave my job, and uh, we're gonna make this happen. And you were like, no. You're the only one with a job. Yeah, she's the only one that had a job, <laughs> and we had thirty thousand dollars in credit card debt because we were trying to start this thing on our own. And right. and she quit. She came home on Friday and said, "I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not working all these jobs. So let's get this team back together." Yeah. So we had amazing possibility in front of us. In fact, this team went on to create the third largest candle manufacturer in the United States. Um, we had we ended up buying a 600,000 square foot facility, manufacturing facility in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, we were making candles for everyone else's brand, just the same stuff that we were doing uh, when we started, for people like Pier One, Walgreens, Walmart. I mean, big customers. It was uh, it became a lot of press pressure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you, you probably remember the year that gas prices went from a dollar to four dollars a gallon. Um, those same, that same product that makes gas, the oil industry, also makes wax and our largest uh, purchase was wax. Exxon was not shy about passing price increases to us and companies um, like our big retailers we sold to were not interested in, in letting us raise prices. There was an amazing squeeze and a lot of pressure and it became all about price. Yeah, and because it was all about price you just didn't need the creativity for the product. Um, so. At that point, there was we decided there was really no reason for me to be there, so I went home and kept raising the kids because they were at that point in life. So we separated yeah. again. That was terrible. I should have known that there were going to be problems in the future when she left. Uh, there always is. Um, so, but we had um, we had to survive. We had to figure this out. Um, this this mounting pressure and all this uh, force issue on price. Um, we had we knew we had to make a change as a company. Um, or we wouldn't survive and we had 200 families that were counting on us. It wasn't really about whether or not Kelly and I could figure out how to get jobs, but it was about those 200 families that really depended on us. People um, that you probably know in our business today like Steve Reed, like Patty Parker, like Andrea Garrison, like Roger Curry, like David Hogue. I mean there's a whole family of people uh, that were counting on us to make the right decision. Mm -hmm. So in 2010 we began creating a company that would save us all, Pink Zebra. Believe it or not, the Pink Zebra name came from me. Um, pink is the international symbol for powerful women. 
And zebras are um, unique individuals. All the finger, dark fingerprints, all the um, zebra stripes, stripes. Are, are unique. And they're stronger together, so when they stand together, the lions can't tell them apart, so they are um, a lot stronger as they stand together. So we set out to create a company of powerful, unique women. Yes. It was amazing. It is amazing. And I remember uh, the night that you came home with your pink zebra plan, which I didn't know you were working on. Um, and I, you put down that logo on the, on the table and I looked at it as you were describing the plan to me. All I was thinking about was how adorable the zebra was. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of became friends with her and that's when I looked at you and said, okay, I'm in, but her name is Paisley. So she right. got a name she and named her right then. Pink Zebra is coming alive. Well, and I thought that was a great idea. I mean, I was like, wow, this is a really great idea. It's a great concept. It felt fantastic. But I knew that I had to have my partner back. I had to have Kelly back in the business because mm -hmm. when she's in the business and involved, then we win. We always did. <laughs> so I was glad she was And super I was glad, glad was to be back. back because now that we were actually going to be able to make great fragrance product again and get that directly to the consumer and use all that experience that we had had for the last 15 or more years, um, I was super excited. It was wonderful. So, But we did not have the same experience um, in the direct selling industry. We always were in right. the retail side. So Tom went ahead and hired a direct selling consulting firm. That's right. Which uh, took us to the next level. So Kelly and her team created an amazing candle line that we took to this, uh, this consulting firm. And we showed this to him. And he says, is there anything, any product line that you created for retail that you thought was going to be fantastic but it failed. And she wouldn't even look at me because no. she knew exactly I knew what, he was what I was thinking. And he was so excited. Oh, it was Sprinkles. Here we go again. So in 1997, <laughs> we actually created Sprinkles and we tested it at Bath & Body Works. They were one of our bigger customers mm -hmm. and um, 30 white barn stores had Sprinkles and it totally failed. And he said this to us and said, it, it's something needed demonstration and we knew right then right. we needed Sprinkles to be part of our program. So. We set out to, to, to create sprinkles and make them part of our line. Yeah. We, we had a big challenge though because to make sprinkles and make them make sense we had to get a machine that was hundreds of thousands of dollars of which we did not have. <laughs> um, so we, I, we, I pushed forward and told the team we had to leverage everything, I mean literally leverage everything to get this machine. But we believed. And we believed. We just kept and going. We went forward and ordered the machine. In the meantime we decided to make the sprinkles on rubber mats That's right. until the machine came in. So, so, so um, David made all of these 500 mats out of silicone where we could, where we could pour wax and make the sprinkles. And we had everybody in the company, uh, including Andrea, um, uh, Peggy, everybody. Uh, uh, Patty, everybody. They'd come in at five, at in, the five morning, in the morning and they'd start oh my God. pouring sprinkles, Making sprinkles mat on these mats, mat. right? So it was crazy. We launched it and it turns out sprinkles were the best selling thing we had. Of course. The machine came in, it all worked. Um, so Pink Zebra was just crazy growth, right? And but it didn't didn't until the second reunion. It really didn't didn't really resonate with with us mm -hmm. how Pink Zebra was really um, going to change our life. We thought it was just going to be all the great products. Yeah. And so we're at the second happened, reunion, right? and we had a consultant come up to us, and she said um, she had been living in her car with her daughter, her tiny young daughter, and Pink Zebra allowed her to get out of that environment, move into a home, and and raise her daughter, and it literally changed her life. And in that moment, it still gives me goosebumps. Me too. Tell that story. In that moment, um, I knew that we were destined uh, to do Pink Zebra. That this was our destiny. To change life. Everyone we did business with um, assumed we were going to be going to be crushed by these giant retailers and fail and close our doors. But they didn't know what this team was made of. They didn't know what this amazing group of people would be able to do. We not only survived. We went on to create something. Um, amazing that would change lives um, for everyone around the world. That's right. That's to me that was the unexpected part, but the best part was the changing of so many people and so many families. Yeah. Best part. Yeah. So every day, this Pink Zebra family gives hope and opportunity to change a life. We are grateful. Yes, and thank you for being part of our Pink Zebra family. Thank you. <laughs>